Hi everybody, it is Naomi, food and health coach. I want to have a conversation today about why is it all of a sudden so important? Like your health now, like why is that the case? I had two conversations with clients today where they shared how maybe their grandparents' generation was not as sick and they were able to do things for a very long time into very old age. And then I had another conversation with another client where she spoke about how the way people ate or the way people eat back in her home country doesn't affect their health as much. But here, when they are here in the United States, it does. And those things are very interesting. And I have my own theories about why that is the case. So let's get into that a little bit because I think it's going to be super eye-opening for you to really, what I love to do is really zoom out from the past, like zoom out and look at the past lives and then of people in your family and then zoom out in the other direction to your future and then decide how you want to start living your life right now. Taking into account what you're seeing, the trends that you're seeing and maybe your family and maybe some friends um, of how they lived before, how people are living now in older generations and what you want to do about that for yourself. Because I think that anybody watching this is has ample time to get things done depending on which way you want to choose to go, right? So first I want to zoom out and look at maybe our ancestors, grandparents, things like that. My client said something very impactful where she was like, wow, in the matter of one generation, everybody is so sick. She said, my grandmother went well into her old age without being sick. She was able to move around. She was able to take care of herself. She was able to do her thing. And all of her kids, about six of them, I think, um, they're all now doing well. They all have some sort of chronic disease. Some of them are in nursing homes and they're fairly young because they can't even walk. They can't even hold things in their hands, right? And that's so sad, right? It It's hard to watch. And you might be there thinking like, what happens? What happens when... One generation just switches from one day to the next. And one thing I asked her was, are all her children here in the U.S.? And she said, yes, that they are here. So what I think happens is, right, like I, it's not proven or anything, but there's plenty of literature out there that can back this up where it's like older generations lived their life in a different way. I'm not saying they didn't have hardship. I'm not saying they didn't have stress. But if you take into account holistic health and what goes on, the lifestyle matters a lot. So this particular client's family is from the Dominican Republic. I'm Dominican. So what do you see there? In general, right? These are generalizations. The food that they're eating is directly from the ground is whole foods, is complex foods, right? It's pretty fresh, um, especially back in the day. There was like no processed foods really, no, no fast food really, no junk. Even if it was the junk, it was actual food. It was like dulce made from fruits and chicharron. I love to bring up chicharron, it's so good. Um, but it was actual foods, right? And they were moving. They were moving. They had to get their chores done. A lot of people had jobs outside the house. They had to transport things physically from one place to the next. They were maybe harvesting their own food. Um, they had to walk places because maybe they didn't have transportation like that. They were in sunshine. Sunshine. 
okay that matters for a lot they had community whether it was at the church or their neighbors even if it was bochinche they had community okay so no one really had to think about how their lifestyle was and how it affected their health because the norm and the regular way that they were living their life was conducive to promoting health this is why i see people in their 80s in the dominican republic and you would think that they were maybe in their 60s 20 years younger because of the way they are able to move of their strength of the way they're able to sit up straight of the way that they're still able to take care of themselves and live a fruitful life and that's where i want to get at when you think to your last 30 to 20 years because what's going on here is that the people that are here and you're already 60 70 80 you have zero quality of life you're most likely in a nursing home you're most likely extremely sick where you have to have a lot of doctor's appointments you don't have any energy right and you live a very debilitated, sad life where people need to take care of you all the time, where you're in this building that people don't really care about you in the nursing homes because in reality, you can't fend for yourself anymore. And that makes me so extremely sad. And that's part of the reason why I'm so passionate about this work. We don't think about those last years, right? And it's hard kind of to think about and to know that what we do now affects us later on. But we have great examples around us where we see how our parents are, maybe our grandparents, and we see how people in other places are. Another thing that my client, another client mentioned, because we were talking about uh, a recipe card that she had and how it was affecting her, although the meal seemed very healthy at the forefront, we dug deeper to see what it had inside. And we were talking about like what counts as a carb and what doesn't. And what she she's Indian. And what she said was, oh, in India, people eat large piles of rice with like and very little amounts of meat and a lot of beans and all that, which is true. And I asked her, how are how is their quality of life? How much are they moving? And she was like, oh, they move tons they move tons they get all their chores done they have to walk they have to do this they have to do that that's the difference a lot of times we live in such a sedentary world here in the united states a lot of it is sitting um the stressors are different is a very isolating type of place where community is not encouraged where you're not talking to your neighbors where you keep things to yourself and very private where even um religious institutions where a lot of people would get their community fill is not here anymore there's a lot of especially post pandemic where a lot of things have moved to zoom or virtually, like people are at home listening to services, people are at home in community and whatever it is, the person to person interactions are not there anymore. We're not leaving our houses, so we're not getting fresh air, we're not getting sunshine, we're not moving because we're at home most of the time. We're working from home, we're getting things delivered to us consistently. We're not going to the store. I mean, that can be stressful. However, um, we're not doing a lot of the things that naturally contributes to a healthy life, right? So I want you and I encourage you to take a zoomed out picture and view of what helps you live a life in the way that you want to live it and why do we have to be so intentional now because a lot of the habits a lot of the ways that we live are how are that we live now 
is not conducive to overall health. This is why now there's this whole other area of why we need to be so intentional about our food, about our movement, about when we get sunshine, about community. And that can seem so stressful because it's adding on to what we already have to do with our careers, with our children, with our family members, with our friendships, like everything just seems like another thing to do. And I get that. What I want to encourage is that when we do start to live the life of maybe how they would live it before and get in some of that sunshine, get in some of that movement, be a little bit more intentional about our meals, then we actually will start feeling better and the rest of our life won't seem like such a chore. I had a client today again tell me, I wake up in a better mood. Just that is so valuable. You wake up in a better mood. When I start working with my clients, I start mostly with bringing their energy back up. Bringing stability before we start getting real deep into food. Testing out their mindset. Right? Because, because, um, when we don't focus on those things, you don't have the energy or mental capacity to do anything else. So thinking about your food will be a chore. Thinking of how you're going to move will be a chore. Thinking of when you're going to leave your house to get some sunshine will be a chore. Okay? And I want you to... Identify what's your why. Why do you keep doing these things that may seem unnatural when before it was just the norm? Because I love to think about what my quality of life is going to keep on being. What I want to keep on doing. The freedom I want to keep on having when I take care of myself now as I get older. We always say we're going to wait. I had a family member tell me that they were going to wait until they retired to start moving, to start incorporating these things. And by the time they retire, it might be too late. Like by the time they retire, they may end up in the nursing home or wherever else it is that they need to get taken care of because... You will keep, time doesn't wait for you. You think you have time to wait. Time is not waiting for you. The clock is ticking. The time is ticking. Your internal physiology, your biology, everything is ticking. And you keep waiting to, I don't know what. And I know it seems so backwards that when we take care of ourselves, we do better because it seems so cumbersome and that you need so much time and that you're going to be so tired and you don't have the energy to do these things, but it's so backwards. It's really so backwards. You do not, you are not even aware of how much you're going to be able to focus and have energy to do the actual things that you want to do instead of dragging your feet and feeling miserable through life if you just take care of yourself a little bit more. And how can you start doing that? How can you start taking care of yourself a little bit more? Number one, I'm going to give you three things that are super general to like fit almost everybody. The first one is to start managing your sleep and your stress to help you improve your energy. And you're like, how in the world am I going to do that? I know. Number two, what are you eating? I would try and cut down on processed foods as much as I can incorporate actual real foods as much as I can, eat an ample amount of protein to cut down on cravings 
and to keep you satiated. And by this, I don't mean that every single meal needs to be cooked at home. There are definitely strategies that are out here that you can use for super quick meals or when you're ordering out. And number three, I would encourage you to move. If you don't move at all, I would encourage you to at least start going outside for a walk. If you work from home, standing up every 45 minutes and getting some movement in. If you have stairs somewhere in your building or in your home, use them. If you don't go for a walk, if you don't walk laps around your apartment or your room, if you don't have that, then you can do squats in the bathroom between your meetings. And ideally, you would hire somebody to help you with that. Okay? So it is something that it's worth looking into, that it's worth it's worth your time and it's worth your energy. Because you don't want to find yourself in a place many years from now now and say, damn, I wish I would have started back then. Damn, I wish I would have taken care of myself better because I'm suffering from X, Y, Z right now that was totally preventable. Okay, so if you are really interested in digging deeper into this personally for yourself, knowing what your lifestyle is, knowing what your circumstances is, even if you feel like you're a high achiever and you don't have time and you have all these other things going on, I promise you there is a way. I really do promise you there is a way. And it is the main reason why you should be taking care of yourself because I asked a a person, I said, okay, you can't afford to take care of yourself an hour a day. Can you afford to be wiped out completely sick for two weeks? Because whether you like it or not, that's what your body does. And this person was like, no, I don't. So wouldn't it be better if you just learned how to care for yourself on a daily basis the best you can so that you can keep going and you can keep achieving your goals and you can keep being a high achiever from a place of joy and excitement and having energy instead of being totally resentful and depleted and sick. That's what I help you do. I help you build these skills and I help you achieve your health and wellness goals, whether that is to prevent and reverse diseases, whether that is doing very sustainable diet-free weight loss with a health-first approach. That's how I work. I help you realize how your body is feeling and what it's doing and how you can really have control whether your stomach hurts or not. That's powerful, okay? So if this, you know, is like tugging at your heart and you're like, damn, I've never heard of it being approached this way. I know this is exactly what I need. I see people in my family and the road they're going down. And I want to be that generation that flips things back and starts creating generational health within my family then I totally invite you to book a consultation, okay? And we'll work on that together. I invite you to book a consultation with the link in my bio and let's get you to living your best, high achieving life rooted in wellness, your best life, all right? I'm Naomi, food and health coach, and I'll talk to you next time.